Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey, from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And before we start, I want to thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all of this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos out every month. The patrons voted for this story to be made. So with that, let's jump into another epic story. Who will have what it takes to outwit, outplay, and outlast all the rest? This is Survivor 41. Erica is a 32-year-old communications manager from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and is the first ever Canadian winner of Survivor. To many watching, she seemingly came out of nowhere and stole the win right under from so many players' noses who were seemingly playing bigger, flashier games. So how did she pull it off and how is she hiding underneath everyone's radars? Let's find out. Survivor 41 begins with some changes to the format of the show that it has never seen before. Namely, that this season is only 26 days instead of the 39 that we normally expect due to COVID forcing the cast to quarantine in Fiji before they could actually play the game. As a result, all 18 players who are on three tribes will begin the game with no food, and if they lose a challenge, they will lose their flint. Jeff pitches this as a way to make the 26 days feel like 39, but just like in Winners at War, all of the players are arriving on these small boats, and we meet Erica, who tells us that she is going to play like... Getting into the game, I'm gonna be an animal that's let out of its cage. I wanna point out as well that surprisingly enough, this whole intro package ends with Erica, Deshaun, and Xander. Very interesting. After everyone gets on the ship and meets an over-enthusiastic Jeff, Erica gets a chance to speak and she talks about, I was supposed to come last year and it got taken away last minute. And I think about like, so many people lost so much during the pandemic that they're never going to get back, but like we get to still have this experience. I, I can't believe it. So the first challenge is for their fire making tools and right off the bat, despite looking like they should win, the blue tribe, Luvu, that Erica is on, loses since they made the silly error of never unclipping their boat from the anchor. Upon arriving at the beach, the tribes are presented with a conundrum. Either solve a puzzle that they only get one guess at, or they get a few hours as determined by an hourglass to fill up these two massive barrels with water from a predetermined spot in the ocean and only two players can do that task. Danny and Deshaun volunteer to do that since the one guess at the puzzle seems really hard. But while doing said challenge, they go looking for an idol and Nasir catches them and comes back and tells Erica and the rest of Luvu. Despite that snitching, Danny and Deshaun do get the task finished in time, so thankfully their tribe gets flint and machete. Then a boat arrives and says, hey, one of you needs to come with me, I don't care who. Danny volunteers to go, and as it turns out, this ends up being a meeting between one person from each tribe. Ultimately, the three people here have to choose whether they want to keep their vote safe or risk it to get an extra vote. It is commonly referred to in this season as a prisoner's dilemma. Basically, as long as one person keeps their vote safe, anyone else who risks it gets an extra vote. Danny decides to keep his vote safe, and back at camp, he tells everyone the truth about what happened. So at the immunity challenge, Jeff says we have another twist this season, the shot in the dark. If you're feeling like you're gonna be voted out, you can play this one time at tribal council in this season. Now, if you play it, you can't vote, but it gives you a one in six shot at immunity. Also, only one tribe is winning immunity Immunity today. The other two are going to tribal council, but then the immunity challenge takes place, and like it is so often in Survivor, it ends with a puzzle that Erica and Deshaun have to solve for the Luva tribe. And Erica for the win. Luva wins first immunity challenge of Survivor 41. 
And that's it for the premiere of Survivor 41. So far with the Luvu winning immunity and so many events taking place, we didn't see much of Erica beyond the opening, but she does describe herself as an animal being let out of a cage. She seemingly does not have a target on her back, unlike Danny and Deshaun at the moment, and she didn't receive a sad backstory like so many others did this episode. It has been fairly quiet for her so far, but when will she become this animal let out of a cage? We shall see. Episode 2 begins with Deshaun unable to make fire, but Erica encourages him to get better at it. He says how at home he tried practicing with his family, but it took them like 13 hours to successfully do it. So obviously, he says he would be an easy opponent at the final four fire making. At the immunity challenge, once again, it all comes down to the puzzle, and once again, Erica and Deshaun are on it to solve it for Luvu and... The next morning, we hear from Sydney about how she had a conversation with Nasir the night before, and she dumps all this info to everyone else in the tribe, which not only shows that she is untrustworthy to everyone, but it does show Erica as one of the people on the inside group and not the one being left out. Luvu goes on to win immunity, so we slide into episode four, and there is a legitimate reward challenge that's all by itself, it's not shared with immunity for the first time all season. Luvu could win it, but it doesn't really matter since Heather is not in that great of shape and she blows it for the tribe single-handedly. Back at camp, we finally see some of Erica talking strategy and gameplay, but with Deshaun. She says everyone here has been underestimating her and trusts Deshaun with this info, but that isn't really a great move since no voting has taken place yet and no one really knows where anyone stands on Luvu. Part of me feels restless. I know that I'm small, that I'm a sweet person, but I am actually a lion dressed like a lamb. As much as I wanted to keep this like innocent act up, like I'm so ready to take off my little lamb costume and show my teeth a bit more. Right now, Erica is in a full lamb costume. At least that's what she is telling us. We shall see. We then see Erica identify Sydney as being very emotionally driven, which is true. And this bit of info combined with what she said to Deshaun on the boat has Deshaun saying, uh, we need to get out Erica or she will beat me. I've always been a little apprehensive of Erica. Somebody who's that quiet all the time is a little bit sus. And I know she's a really smart girl. Her survivor IQ is high, even though she tries to make it seem like it's low. I want to just cut the head off the snake before it gets too much of a problem. I don't want to give her that opportunity to play the slow beginning game and then emerge at the end and, and, and take me out. But then we see Deshaun rat out Erica to Sydney, which Sydney did not see coming at all. But then a plan is discussed and put into motion. Deshaun wants to throw the challenge to get Erica out. He is that serious about her being a threat. Danny says he understands the idea. She is definitely going to kill us. Uh, she got maybe come her. Deshaun really, really wants to throw the challenge and get Erica out which makes sense to me. The immunity challenge starts off normal enough, but then it happens. We start hearing narration from Danny and Deshaun about how they're throwing this thing. They're really trying to do it. The problem with this is, is that the other tribes just suck so bad. Even when Luvu is throwing a challenge, they're still better than the other tribes, just as long as Heather is sitting on the bench. Heck, Evie on the yellow tribe is swimming sideways, which is one factor they didn't account for. The other factor is Nasir just being a challenge juggernaut who does not quit or slack off, combined with Deshaun saying, hey, if I find this key, I am throwing it in the woods so that we lose. But then... They've got the key! <laughs> Freaking Erica finds the key. This is serious. Deshaun really wants Erica out, and he is now purposely doing bad at the ring toss to the point that the other tribes actually catch up and pass them. But then Nasir takes over, and... That is Nasir. Deshaun and Danny are upset, but Nasir just saved Erica's life in the game and neither of them even knew that that was happening. This is a massive focus on Erica all of a sudden by the storytelling and it feels a little bit out of left field, but Deshaun recognizes Erica inside of her lamb costume and wants no part of it. Episode five starts with Deshaun once again proposing the idea to throw the immunity challenge to out Erica, but this time he presents it to Nasir because he knows Nasir needs to be in on this if we're doing it because otherwise he's gonna single-handedly win immunity for us, which is normally not annoying, but it is when I'm trying to throw the whole thing. But Nasir says, no way. Throwing always leads to a tribe's downfall, which is true most of, if not all of the time. However, they suspect that if anyone has the idol and isn't telling anyone else, then it would be Erica. But then at the challenge, Xander, Shan, and one other person says the phrases on the notes they found out in the woods that has them activating their individual immunity idols. So Xander, Shan, and Nasir have idols. That's important to know. Luvu goes on to win immunity, and in episode six, everyone is getting excited for a possible merge with the way the tree mail is worded. 
However, Erica says she's excited, but uh, she doesn't quite trust Jeff. Bring all the stuff with you, personal yeah. items. Sounds like a murder. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't trust him. I'm excited, but I still don't trust him. With a possible merge happening this year, says, hey, before we go to the merge, let's just settle this now. Let's be the final six. But this is received like a pinata at a child's funeral since no one agrees. And Deshaun says there is no way this tribe is sticking together. They are way too fractured for that. At the challenge, it is a unique one as Jeff explains that whoever wins earns their spot on the merge tribe, AKA half of everyone here will be getting immunity. So they all draw rocks to see who will be in each group and Erica and Nasir draw the gray rocks. They're not on either team, which is weird. The group consisting of Danny, Deshaun, Ricard, Evie, and Sydney wins, which is so obvious based on how stacked they are. But then they get to choose who goes with them on the merge feast, Nasir or Erica. They talk and tell Jeff. Who is going to join you for the merge feast? Uh, Nasir. Nasir, <gasps> come on over. Clearly Erica's on the bottom of Luvu, and despite saying it was based on rock, paper, scissors, no one actually played the game as we can clearly see. Erica suspects this is the case, but either way, since she was not picked, she's being sent to Exile Island for two days. My first 12 days on Survivor is not what I thought was going to happen. I didn't expect to have moments where I was perfectly safe and feel so powerless. I didn't expect to be exiled for two days, but like, as long as I get it done and I do it, that's what matters. She arrives at Exile where she has to live all by herself and she says, hey, the number one thing I didn't want to do on Survivor was be by myself and yet here it is happening for two nights. But then like so many players before her, we get Erica's backstory and how she grew up and what she had to overcome in life. I've been used to like things never coming easy for me in life. Growing up in Canada, like always looking different than the other kids and knowing like how many challenges my parents had in trying to like give us a good life, working so many jobs to like keep us going. It probably hurts them that they didn't have as much like time with us like growing up as they would have wanted to. But I know that like that everything they did like set me up with like the skills to be able to like achieve what I want to do. This is us finally getting to know Erica for who she is and it has taken a long time, but we finally got here. Erica says she has been that sweet lamb so far, but no more. Time for her to play like the lion she really is. I don't know. I actually think that if I can survive here, survive like double my survivor nightmare, I'm going to come back into the game like Still looking like a lamb, but ready to play like a lion. But then the biggest twist all season is offered Erica. Jeff shows up exile and says, I am offering you a choice. Here's an hourglass. If you want, you can keep the events of how everything played out at that last challenge the same, or you can smash this hourglass, give everyone who didn't win immunity, immunity, everyone who won immunity gets it stripped away, but you get immunity in the process. If you want to do nothing, then just leave everything as it is. But if you want to make history by changing history, smash the hourglass. Oh my gosh. Episode seven begins and despite Jeff presenting this extremely hard decision, it really isn't. The show presents it as it is, but it really is not. Her choice is really she can stay at the bottom and leave herself vulnerable at tribal, or she can give herself and the rest of the challenge losers immunity. But the show presents this as something serious to consider. So we then hear from Erica about how she has been a lifelong fan of the show. And this is a new chapter in her story. At the immunity challenge, we have no idea what decision Erica has made yet. So Jeff catches everyone up to speed about what happened and what decision she has to make. And then we find out. I smashed the hourglass and I changed the course of history. So those who earn the merge feast and immunity no longer have immunity, but thankfully they got to keep that merge feast. They didn't have to puke back up. And one of them will be voted out. Whether this is fair or not, which is discussed back at camp, it is happening. As Deshaun says so eloquently. What is fair, right? Erica tells us once again that her days of being an under the radar woman are done. This is game on. With Erica immune, she slips into the background as some larger events take place, such as Xander tricking Liana into wasting her advantage, which does yield more information that works for Erica. The green tribe, Ua, only came into the merge with two people. The yellow tribe, Yasa, entered with four, but with Liana flipping on them right away as soon as the merge happens, they're kind of falling apart. Luvu has six people and it seems to be everyone versus the Yasa tribe, not counting Liana. There's a plan to split the vote between Evie and Sydney in case Xander plays his idol for 
Evy, which is a real possibility. So they go to vote, and upon Jeff reading the votes, before he can, it is revealed that Sydney is the only person this season to play her shot in the dark as she reveals whether she got immunity or not. <laughs> not safe no immunity and she loses her vote in the process which means the split vote plan doesn't work since she can't vote for evie and sydney is eliminated in a five to four to three vote sydney drop this budget time for the go had sydney not played her shot in the dark the split vote plan would have worked and evie would have been voted out instead episode eight sees a reward challenge where they all draw rocks for teams and once again erica draws the gray rock and she's the only one but xander says hey i'll swap with her so she can have a shot at this reward erica's group does go on to win the reward challenge on a puzzle that her and evie solve and they get grilled cheese and chips and apparently this is erica's dream come true as she has been talking about this back at camp for the last 10 days all i've talked about is how I wanted a sandwich with chips. So when I see a pile of grilled cheese sandwiches and a massive bowl of chips, I was like, maybe I manifested this reward. But still, the bulk of what we see in the show is not about Erica, despite her saying multiple times she's being let out of the cage due to Shan just being the front runner for story time and as the leader of a lot of what is happening right now. Shan talks to Erica and says, tonight we're splitting the votes with the intention of getting out Tiffany to try and out Xander's idol. Erica isn't aligned with Tiffany, so this is an easy vote as Tiffany does indeed go in a six to two to two to one vote. Tiffany, Travis book. Thank you. Time for go. Episode nine begins with a beautiful sunrise where everyone is joining the calm moments when they come. But then it finally happens. People are starting to realize that maybe Shan is the one running the show and she doesn't really care who knows this as she openly avoids Xander and Erica to talk with her alliance of Danny, Deshaun, and Leanna right in front of them, who have all formed an alliance to represent something bigger than themselves. We, sh we should talk y'all as a four. We should just talk as a four, you know? Like, are you serious? You don't even see that we're like right there? I guess they think that like all the people on the bottom are so scattered that we could never work together. You think maybe we should be voting either Shan or Ricard? Maybe. While sitting around the fire, Erica connects with Ricard and as it turns out, he is deaf in his right ear and has to read lips. It isn't very often we get deaf players on Survivor and he is only half deaf, but deaf nonetheless. But then we hear from Shan about how she must agree with Deshaun because she wants Erica out since she is a smart game player. Everyone's obsessed with Xander because he's got the idol, but I want to get rid of Erica. I feel like she's probably one of the smarter players in the game and I don't trust her, not even a little bit. At the immunity challenge, Jeff says we are splitting everyone up into two groups. This seems to be a running trend so far throughout the merge. Both groups this time though are going to tribal council and both groups are voting out one player from their group. However, one player from each group can win immunity today and Erica is in the yellow group. It comes down to her and Nasir for individual immunity and... Hey. Nasir is out. Erica wins individual immunity. When Jeff puts the necklace on Erica, she says, finally, this is a lifelong dream of mine. Oh my gosh, I've just dreamed of this moment since I was a kid. Since Erica won immunity, Shan says, all right, well, we can't knock out Erica, but we can get her closest ally out of the game, Heather which is news to us since we barely knew to this point who Erica's close with, let alone being Heather, who we don't know at all. Nasir then sits down next to Heather and Erica and says, hey, Heather, you're going. Sorry about that. Erica says, you could play your idol for Heather if you want, Nasir, and we can knock out Shannon Ricard. And Nasir says, no way, I'm not doing that. Erica doesn't like the cockiness and says, it is time for Nasir and Shan to go. So I would love to get rid of Nasir, or I was hoping that like maybe there's the chance to vote out Shan. But Ricard says, screw Shan. He doesn't view Heather as a threat, which he is correct about, and wants Nasir out instead. So he says, hey, Heather and Erica, let's flip the script. Now, if Ricard was lying, which he has no need to in this situation, it wouldn't be too shocking since this is Survivor where people lie constantly, and apparently this season, snitch all the time. But Erica says, if Ricard even dares lie to her about this. I hope this works for all of us. If not, I will literally kill you guys. <laughs> At Tribal Council, Shan plays her extra vote just in case Nasir does whip out his idol. He doesn't. So on the revote, he ends up going to the jury in a four to zero vote. Nasir, the tribe has spoken. Episode 10 starts with Erica saying, 
good. She wanted Nisir gone. Now it's time for Shan to go next, and she is the kingpin, which is very accurate. Erica then talks to Deshaun and says, why are we so worried about Xander and his idol? He has no relationships. His alliance of Evie and Tiffany are voted out because Evie was part of the other group that voted and they voted out Evie. So his threat level is at an all time low. We shouldn't worry about him at all. My preference would be to get out Shan and keep Xander. Mine too. I I'm down with that. Because but just... Xander has no relationships. Shan, who knows who she could pull in. This is really true, by the way. Ricard goes on to win individual immunity, which is good for him because Shan had him as her next target and he knew it. So Shan reverts to her plan from the last episode and says, hey, me and the Black Alliance, which consists of Danny, Deshaun, and Liana, we are going to vote at Erica along with her card and get her out five to four. It's going to be no problem. But Ricard goes behind her back and says, no way. I can't let Shan continue to gain power in this game by eliminating anyone that is even remotely a threat to her. If this keeps happening, she will get the majority and never let it go. Kind of like Boston Rob, which as we've seen in the past does work. Erica then hears about this plan to get her out through to Shan, betraying his own alliance and realizes that she definitely needs Shan out and she's going to make it happen. With Ricard and Deshaun both possibly flipping, she needs to secure this will work for her so that even if Shan plays her idol, she can make something happen that benefits her. So she talks to Danny and convinces him that Shan is the right move and we need to split the votes so that if she does play her idol, Liana, Shan's right hand lady, goes instead. How would you feel if we did three votes on Shan, three votes on Liana, and then Liana and Shan vote wherever? If Shan plays her idol, Liana gets knocked out. So you got record? Yeah. Okay. At Tribal Council, Erica says people on the bottom need to stir up chaos to stay in the game. It is not the time to roll over and die just because the numbers are not in their favor. Everyone here is an equally valuable asset. Just as it was planned out by Erica, the split vote plan goes perfectly. And since Shan did not play her idol, she is eliminated in a six to zero vote. Hard, you have my vote for a million dollars. Deshaun, you're a snake. <laughs> Shan, mm -hmm. tribe is spoken. Episode 11 begins with the immunity challenge, but as the players walk in. Hi, Dad. Well, thanks for another good morning, Eric. Good morning. Wow. The kinder, gentler Jeff is a weird change from the man we have known for so long. Anyways, he says this challenge brings with it yet another twist for this season, do or die. The first player to drop out of this immunity challenge has to play a game of chance at tribal where if they lose, they're out of the game. But if they win, they get immunity. Everyone is given the choice to participate to sit out, and Erica is the only woman to not sit out. She takes this challenge head on in mere seconds into the challenge. Someone else is the first player to drop, and that is... And just like that, Deshaun is out. So Deshaun has to play do or die. Erica doesn't win immunity, but she doesn't have to play the chance game. So back at camp, Erica talks to Xander and says Ricard needs to go eventually because with Shan gone, he is now the kingpin. It seems like no one here can beat him at final tribal council. However, Liana would also be a good move for her since she has made zero effort to work with Erica or Xander. But then we see Xander and Ricard talk right after where we hear that they are not sure if they can trust Erica since she is so squirmish. And here is a fine example of why Xander doesn't seem to make strong connections in this game. Despite coming into the merge with Tiffany and Evie aligned with him, they wanted him out in the pre-merge and their alliance was kind of just a marriage of convenience. Xander seemingly just tells everyone what they want to hear, kind of like a politician, and he doesn't come across as genuine when doing so. And we know this because we hear it from so many people this season. So that will be important later. Keep that in the back of your mind. But for now, it seems like going into this tribal, Erica is the swing vote. She says, I can take out Ricard or Liana. Now in the past, Ricard has saved my butt twice by flipping and Liana has made zero effort to work with me, but Ricard is the bigger jury threat. And it's one of those moves where you're watching at home and you think, oh my God, it's so obvious. You have to take the big threat out of the game. But like when you're in the game, you see how important it is to have people you can trust. But this could be all for naught since at Tribal, Deshaun has to play the do or die game. So let's see what happens. He has a one in three shot to be safe. As it turns out, he picks a box and Jeff opens a different one, showing that the other one was wrong, a real Monty Hall problem, and asks Deshaun, do you want to switch? Deshaun says no to this and... Oh my oh. God. Deshaun oh, got flamed. Oh, oh, oh. You are safe, my friend. Oh. Deshaun is safe and he gets immunity. So everyone goes to vote. And what does Erica pick when it comes to someone going home? Well, the person voted out fifth member of our jury. Liana, need to bring me a torch. Liana, the tribe has spoken. Thank you. Liana is out five to three, and this was clearly 
the right choice since Ricard actually helps Erica time and time again, whereas Liana has done literally nothing to help Erica. Episode 12 begins with Danny and Deshaun in shock that Ricard is still in this game. For them, it seems clear. Get out, Ricard. He's the biggest threat to our games. Danny even goes so far as to compare Ricard to one of the best football players of all time, Tom Brady, by saying Ricard is the Tom Brady of this season. He can beat everyone here at Final Three. It's not even close. Now, at the previous Tribal Council, Deshaun shared his thoughts and emotions on playing Survivor and loving how diverse this cast is, which outside of a few outlier seasons, hasn't typically been the case for this show. Erica talks to him and says, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Deshaun, and I am glad you said it. She says she wants to see a woman win, so voting out Liana was hard, but hey, if a woman is to win, why shouldn't it be her? It's been a long time since a woman's won. I want to see a woman win, ideally me. A lot of people like went through a lot of hurt this year and they like want to see like heroes that look like them. At the reward challenge, Erica is on a team with Xander and Sean, and they win pretty easily, which nets them chicken and veggies. While eating, Erica says, hey, why not us be the final three? We have all played different games and have different stories to present to the jury. Deshaun and Xander seem to be on board with this. If exactly three right. of us could be sitting together, then it's anyone's game. Mm -hmm. Just know I'm down. Yeah. Going into the immunity challenge, Ricard is the big target on the board. Everyone wants him out, but he wins his third immunity for the season. And back at camp, people start talking about getting out Deshaun next. But Erica says, no way. I need to convince everyone to vote out Danny instead, despite it really only only benefiting my game to do so. I want to keep Deshaun in the game because I know that Deshaun wants to go to the end game with me. There is a bit of work there to figure out how to convince my alliance that it's actually in our best interest to get rid of Danny when really it's everybody's best interest to get rid of Deshaun except for mine. <laughs> At Tribal Council, Danny and Deshaun are not over how Ricard was not voted at the last Tribal, and they're like, hey, he's sitting here with immunity, see what you've done? And Erica says, what is dumb and what is smart is not something that can be universal for everyone all the time. What is bad for them could be good for someone else. Threats vary based on everyone's individual game, which is very true because Liana was a massive threat to Erica's game. But Liana was not a threat at all to Danny and Deshaun's game. Deshaun then tries a Hail Mary move that he really should have done in one-on-one -on -one conversations at camp and not here where everyone, including the jury, react negatively to it as he tries to expose Erica. Erica will not be taking you to the end, Heather. She told me at the water well, like, I can't bring Heather to the end of the game because if I do, she might steal some of my votes because we played identical games. So that's what was said, and I'm saying it in front of everybody so you know it's the truth. I just find the gameplay interesting to try and do this truth bomb in the middle of tribal council when you don't know if you were the one going or staying. Especially if what you're saying is true. If Erica didn't want to take her to the end, what if you were the one to be by her side and now you just ruined it? And I'm kind of glad you brought that up because I feel like we've always tried to work together and I've always, in my gut, just couldn't 100% trust you and now I know. Mm -hmm. so now you get you. it, now you get so it, So thank you. Truly, Heather's been kind of an unknown entity to us story-wise. That's why I haven't really talked about her, despite her constantly being told that she is close with Erica. We were constantly told she's close with Erica, and yet we haven't really seen that. The vote ends up being split between Danny and Deshaun as they voted for each other. And on the revote, Erica gets her way, and Danny is gone four to zero. Danny, sharp spoken. It is time for the finale. Ricard versus Xander versus Erica versus Deshaun versus Heather. Yes, Heather is in the final five and we barely know anything about her. But the bigger point is that if Ricard were to be voted out, Erica would become the favorite to win it all as Deshaun has burned bridges and no one is really connecting with Xander. So the final five are all sent to a new beach that doesn't have a shelter. They will need to suffer through these last few days. Deshaun then tries to talk to Erica to smooth things over and she shuts that down. We should talk. I, I'm, I'm not, sorry. I'm not ready to talk to you right no? now, but you're welcome for being here. Oh. But then Erica talks to Heather and that bridge that was burned by Deshaun at the last tribal is now showing the results as Heather wants nothing to do with Erica despite us being told they are good friends who have played this game very similarly. How are you doing today? Fine. So on a scale of one to 10, how pissed are you at me? No problem. The next morning, the final five are given a clue that they need to decipher that will lead them to the final advantage of the season. Xander and Ricard solve this fast, and Erica lags behind so much so that she's actually the last one to solve the clue. But despite that, no one has found it yet. That is until... <laughs> 
she finds the advantage and as it turns out it nets her a pretty big advantage at the next immunity challenge but this will really only matter if she wins immunity but thankfully for her the immunity challenge has a lot of physical aspects but more importantly it ends with a puzzle and Erica's specialty so she gets it close between her and Ricard and yes, yes. Erica wins individual immunity with that crucial immunity win she also wins reward and she chooses to take Heather with her they dine over steak and wine, and Erica successfully apologizes and reconnects with Heather. Now, they're in control of the game. It's almost poetic how Heather and I have grown from people that were disregarded to people who are now calling the shots. Cheers. Cheers. Love you. Ditto. I don't mind being a little tipsy for Tribal. At Tribal Council, it is time for the kingpin to go, as Ricard doesn't have immunity, so he is voted out in a four to one vote. Ricard, the tribe has spoken. Time to go. The next day, Erica is pretty sure she's going to end up in the fire making competition barring an immunity win. She knows that she is now the biggest jury threat left. Then, at the challenge... You again. I'm waiting for it. Oh, Hi. I didn't think I'd see you today. I've you? gotten used to the highs. Oh. Jeff is just weird this season. Anyways, Xander wins immunity and now he gets to decide who is making fire, which is not what Erica wants. She says she wants fate to be in her own hands, not Xander's. Xander then talks to the other three individually, and frankly, for him to have a shot at winning, he needs to beat Erica at fire himself. Heather even says this to him, and... I'm gonna plant one seed. If Erica can beat you. I don't think so. Xander's logic becomes very much flawed, as he knows Erica has the best resume in the game, but he must think he is better, because he says he doesn't want her making fire, because it would just add something more to her resume, and for some reason he must think he has some sort of edge over her, he's sadly mistaken if he thinks that. Erica is surprised by this call though. I'm taking you. You're taking- are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. Tonight. So this next moment is not super clear as to what Erica is doing intentionally as she practices making fire nonchalantly. And Xander sees how bad she is and freaks out that maybe he made the wrong call. Maybe Erica should make fire. Is this a ploy? Is she just doing this to like tempt me? What isn't clear is whether Erica is baiting him or not because she is baking this very casually. It doesn't really seem like she's practicing that hard. But at Tribal, she is made safe by Xander anyways. So Deshaun and Heather face off and it becomes a neck and neck race until... Heather, let's there it is! Let's go! Wow. Heather, the tribe is spoken. With Heather eliminated, Erica is now in the final three, and on day 26, she gets one last time to reflect before final tribal, where she says she played a good game and her constantly being underestimated worked out to her benefit. I played a hell of a game, but I get underestimated because of like how I look and my size. But inside, like I know that I'm a fierce competitor, a lion that dressed like a lamb. Now I have to be roaring. It's time to show everyone that I actually have teeth because I know I have what it takes to win. It is time, final tribal council. Can Erica show everyone how she was secretly a lion all along? Will the jury even notice her when she is sitting next to two way more visible players according to the story? Let's find out. Erica starts off final tribal by saying that she played this game with the plan of staying under the radar until it was time to emerge late in the game. A lamb becoming a lion. She takes the time to compliment Heather and explains how at the merge, she was down and out. But after that, she rose to the top to take out some key players players in the season like Shan, Ricard, Liana, and Danny. When I looked at the final six, I knew no matter what combination of final five, I had set myself up with enough potential allies to know that I had a shot to sit in the final three. Erica, you had a very fantastic game. Heather then says, hey Xander, remember when I told you that Erica was the only one left in the game who could beat you? Well, you underestimated her. But what is even more important is that most of Final Tribal is Deshaun and Xander being told their games suck. Deshaun is attacked by Shan for throwing what she calls temper tantrums. And when he says, yes, I did play emotionally, she goes, no, you threw temper tantrums. I want you to be clear on that, which I didn't recall him doing. So I double checked the definition and it states that temper tantrums are outrage slash flailing about screaming, 
slash crying by a baby or a child when he or she is thwarted. So if the jury perceives him that way, then that is not good for him. Plus, she says how she believes he used the Black Alliance in a way that she didn't like. Xander is hammered on how much he was socially unaware and didn't connect with people, and then Erica is given high praise by Danny. I think you did absolutely amazing. Intentionally or unintentionally, you allow people to underestimate you uh, and not see what you were really capable of doing. The reality is I've spent like almost 10 years like going into boardrooms. People treat me like the intern, but I'm really the one who's running the meetings. Again, I was never out in front, but I was never quite at the bottom. And at every tribal council I went to, I was on the right side of the vote. Danny then follows that up by saying, great job. You played the game I wanted to and tried to, and then multiple jurors agree with him verbally. So everyone goes to vote. And normally when this happens at final tribal, we see at least one or two votes being cast, but not one is shown to us here. As Jeff says, surprise, we're doing the vote reveal live right now. No waiting to go back to the States. So then he reads the votes and... First vote, Erica, Deshaun. Erica, 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 winner of Survivor 41, Erica, our first Canadian winner, Erica. So let's break this down. How is Erica as a character? Erica pretty much said it best when she said she is a lion in a lamb's outfit. She played a hard nosed game and took great advantage of the perception she went into the game with. She did come off as cute, fun, and had Jeff missing her greetings. I mean, how can you not find that adorable? She was a bit quirky and nice, but if you got on her bad side, she will get revenge. She knew that people perceived her to be this nice, harmless girl and played into that role perfectly. It was a shame we didn't get to see more of her personality as the show spent so much time favoring a few players and a vast multitude of events advantages, but we do know that Erica is a Filipino immigrant who went to Canada and is now the first Canadian to win Survivor. It was clear that she was easy to work with and not one person all season complained about living with her or working with her. Out of 15 character moments shown on the show, 12 are heroic and 3 were villainous, making Erica a hero character on Survivor 41. Now how is Erica as a strategist? A few years ago I made a video all about this and talked about how it may not be fair, but the perception people have of you is your greatest weapon if you know what people expect and how you can subvert their expectations without making them mad. Erica nailed this perfectly and despite not looking at all like a challenge beast, she dominated puzzles for her tribe in the pre-merge and then in the actual merged game, she won two individual immunities and even found the hidden advantage despite having the least time to look. She waited until late in the game to make some key moves that eliminated Shan, Liana, Danny, and Ricard. Xander underestimated her and took her to the final three. The only part of her game that seemed handed to her by pure luck was the hour glass since the decision was so obvious and she was sent there based on drawing a rock and being less likable than Nasir, but to be fair, pretty much anyone is less likable than Nasir. Erica may not have played a very flashy game, but she was very crucial at many tribal councils and her resume got pretty stacked at the end. Out of 42 strategic moments shown on the show, 31 were smart and 11 were dumb, making Erica a smart strategist on Survivor 41. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.